Sound in a computer is one of the most tricky things to get right. Something I've been chasing for probably four years, and I've tried everything under the sun. I wanted to revisit old sound cards from like the early 2000s, and I bought like a, a Sound Blaster, an HT Phoenix. Uh, I have this StarTech uh, USB DAC or USB sound card. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. And I also bought a bunch of generic ones off of Amazon because I was looking for a really clean sound. But there's one problem. I didn't understand anything about sound. And I'd still say I need to learn more. But I want to give a high overview here. What happened to sound cards? Why we really don't use them? And I tried to grab an old sound card. and <laughs> It was a fun adventure. I'm going to tell you all about that. And then basically pimp it out and uh, use some op amps like this uh, i bought a giant batch i actually have four other rows of these because it was cheaper to buy in a batch of 50 than it was to buy them independently off of ebay so i just bought 50 of them thinking oh well maybe it's going to work great and then i could sell you these and it'd be fantastic a uh, little spoiler here that uh that's not really how that ended up because it, it's better but ugh. I'll, I'll get to that here in a second so let's first talk about sound in our system. Here is my just sound panel. Now this sound panel that you see on the screen is uh, the stock one from Windows 10, Windows 7. Uh, Windows 11 changed this up to another crappy sound panel. You can go to advanced or in your start run command, you could just type in mmsys.cpl and get this old uh, sound panel up. Either way is fine, but this sound panel is where most things happen. And I want to first talk about analog versus digital and where sound cards come in. Most people are like, well, I'm just using my Realtek built-in motherboard sound card, and uh, it's fine. If you plug in your little 3.55, this little jack like this, into your sound card, and then that's usually what your headphones run off of. You may notice a little hiss in the background. The noise floor is what's called the noise floor is like where you see the first uh, elements of static. If you turn it way up, you start hearing that static. And this is not a great solution, but when you go to like a USB sound card, that noise floor actually gets quite a bit lower, which means there's more headroom and you, you can turn up your sound higher without hearing that hiss. Uh, sound cards can also have a lower sound, uh, noise floor, and that is kind of important to know. But these regular old sound cards that you saw, like the Sound Plasters, you know, they're $100, $200 sound cards I bought. Uh, I would say most of them haven't been manufactured in about the past 10 years, and the reason being is those internal sound cards are horrible. Don't buy them. <laughs> that thanks for coming to my TED talk. But really what what ends up happening is it just introduces too much noise from other components of the computer and these USB ones usually have a leg up on them. That said, those internal ones like my HT Phoenix, I still like because of another thing I can use called opticals uh, or optical cables, uh, also known as ta uh, toss link cables. Uh, they're called a lot of different things in the audio industry, but these cables keep the signal digital and there's no conversion. So you don't add that noise in and it has an extreme, probably the lowest noise floor out of anything I've tried uh, coming from these old cables. And they're a little tricky to use, but well worth it. If you can go ahead and switch all your stuff over to an optical cable and never have to deal with that, that's what you want to do. It's going to give you a great result. Uh, and I installed that specific sound card that I bought with these chips just to see if I could maybe get a better sound. And I got to tell you, the chips uh, was just kind of a fun experiment. Uh, but again, those, those kind of fizzled out on me. But if we look at this, these sound cards are really good at bringing optical in. And a lot of my sources, whether it's my PlayStation or another PC, like my gaming PC, if I'm bringing those in, I never want to convert it to analog and if i could bring that full optical digital signal in i mean it just sounds perfect with no hum or anything 
And uh, that that's really where I'm at. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Micro Center. If you're looking for a sound card, optical cable, anything, I love Micro Center. It's tech heaven for us. And I'm always there at the stores. Anytime I need to go get something today, I drive down to my local Micro Center out in Dallas. That all said, they do have a lot online. Check them out. They have PC builders. If you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. They also have a community dashboard if you want to talk to other people. People. But more than that, what are your experiences with the Micro Center? Because I've only heard positive things. I absolutely love them. I don't have very many sponsors on this channel, but they're one sponsor I'm extremely proud of. And uh, yeah, let me know. Is it, is it thank you too? They, they said, hey, we're giving out flash drives for any new customers. So if you've never shopped at Micro Center and you're local, by all means, uh, click on the link below. They're giving away a 128 gig flash drive or micro SD card uh, in store only. So you have to be a new customer, but definitely check that out. But now let's actually talk about some things when it comes to bringing these in and understanding uh, the Hertz aspect of it. Like, hey, what what kind of frequency are these running at? Because if you have a mismatch of frequency, it's gonna add distortion to the line. It's gonna cause all kinds of issues. It could change your voice into a chipmunk. If you go from like a, a recording an analog at 44 Hertz and it's actually switched to digital 48, it's gonna actually speed up your voice. So you can have a chipmunk effect, which I've actually made that mistake before. It's pretty funny. I did it on a live stream of all things. Uh, but this is the sound properties of most inputs. Like when you do an actual recording, this is actually coming from my analog sound craft over here. And when I did that conversion, I make sure my digital always stays at 48 Hertz by stock defaults. Everything defaults to about 44.1 Hertz. And that's fine. If everything's just in your system, if you only have one system, uh, usually OBS launches and OBS looks like this. Usually that top one is 40, uh, 44 Hertz instead of 48. But if you do use any professional audio equipment, you do need to switch everything in your entire system to 48. So you're either 44 or 48. You don't mix and match these numbers. That was something uh, that's really important to understand and why I always make sure everything's two channel, 24 bit, 48 Hertz across everything because that's what most of my audio equipment runs at and it can give a very very clean signal so that brings us kind of the question of hey what do we do we need these sound cards in this thing and it just depends on the person for most people you just plug in the 3.5 into your motherboard and it's fine i will say using this one which i'm going to show real fast installing this putting these chips in is kind of a fun deal and it does give a little bit more a little bit cleaner uh audio but it's still not very good for all the money and time i put into this project to make this internal sound card sound pretty good and have a lower noise floor i would consider it not worth it i would instead just go with one of these a little usb sound card or a usb dac research which one's best for you and then go it i'll leave a link to the star tech which i find pretty decent the one thing i like about the 7.5 here is or, or 7.1 star tech sound card is it has an optical in and an optical out so i can use this to keep everything digital uh the, the actual deck itself is actually not that great i think this is only 40 bucks or 50 bucks so not a very clean one there's a lot better more professional ones on the market i just haven't bought those so when it comes to sound and sound Sound cards in your computer they've kind of died off because most people just don't care and usually if you're using a $30 pair of headphones you're not even gonna know you know you're not gonna be cranking that so high that you hear that static in the background or that noise floor that I've been talking about and you just don't care and that's fine that works for you you don't need a sound card and I'd say this is a majority of users but for those audio files out there I would look at getting some optical headsets and then using an optical out to really uh, get the best sound out of your system and anytime I'm trying to bring in signals from some other source whether it's another computer or a gaming system or whatever it might be I try to keep everything uh, digital these days and I just recently started doing this and I've noticed a huge increase in quality of sound that I hear in my my monitors and that's great or my headset and that is what you want and that's where you want to go with this is those understanding those basic principles which I needed to but also 
don't convert from analog to digital or go from digital to analog back to digital. All these things introduce a lot of noise into your stuff. And that's what a lot of these sound cards used to do. And uh, they're just not really needed that much anymore. So that's kind of why they've died off. That's like why you use a sound card in 2022. And many systems don't even need this because a lot of times they do have like an optical out and you can just use that one on your board. And if it does, if it's there, use it, get it, get, get something. You'll thank me later because once you've gone to a really nice headset that runs off optical, it is almost impossible to go back to analog as it's just like nails on the chalkboard to me. But that's sound cards in 2022. It's a, it's a tricky thing. And uh, I know I still have a lot to learn in this realm, but sound off in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think of sound. Uh, what, what kind of setup, what kind of USB DAC do you use if uh, you're an audiophile? Because I'm always on the hunt for something better out there. I just wanted to kind of give you my experience with sound cards, what I was trying to do. And uh, it's always a rabbit that I'm chasing trying to get the best audio out there. Uh, my next big purchase probably will be a UFX Plus. So it's about a $1,600 audio appliance that many music producers use, but I feel like uh, the USB on that will be able to take in a lot of uh, uh, optical digital stuff, but also get really clean analog, do all the conversion on the box itself, and then just put that into OBS for me. Uh, that's already pre-mixed, which would be kind of awesome. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'm off of my rocker here, uh, but explaining audio is one thing that I've really just, uh, I didn't think I would enjoy, but I've really delved into it. And I'm, I'm still fascinated by it. So let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.